Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to show you how you can use Memo and use Memo from React in order to improve performance of your React code. I will start with a project that is generated by Create React App and I will create a state where I'm going to store the value of the input field that I'm going to create. The initial state will be an empty string and it is important to import use state from React. And now I will add an input field with a type text and on change event which will update the input text state. So here I will call set input text which will just set the state to the value of the event target, which is the input field. We can check in the browser how it looks. So if we type something, nothing really changes. And we can also display the input text state above the input field. So when the user types something, it will be displayed above the input field. This works fine. And now let's add another component. I will just create a new folder components where I will create a logo component. And here I will just use the logo image, which is provided in the app component. So this component will just return that image. And I will also add export default logo. And I will also import logo SVG file inside the logo component. So now I can import this component in the app component. So it should work the same. Let's check in the browser. Okay, we just need to adapt the path to the logo SVG. And now it works fine. So if we type something, everything works the same. But what happens if we add console.count and see the amount of renders for this component? You can see that with each input change, the logo component is being re-rendered. The reason for that is because the app component is re-rendered with each change of the state. You can also set console count here and check that the amount of renders is the same for the app component as well for the logo component. So we don't want to have unnecessary renders of the logo component and we can prevent that by using memo higher order component provided by React. And when we type something in the input field, only the app component will be re-rendered. So what does memo do in order to prevent re-rendering? It will just compare the props of the component and its values and if there isn't any change it will just return the component from the cache and it will not trigger re-rendering. Now let's say that we want to reverse the input text and display it somewhere on the screen. Uh, I will create a, a function for that, uh, get reverse text and it will just convert the input text to the array. It will reverse it and convert it back to string. Now we can call this function somewhere in the template and the reverse text is going to be displayed. We can also put console count inside the function in order to see number of triggers of this function. 
We can also remove this console count from the app.js and from the logo.js in order to make console more clear. And now when we check in the browser, I will refresh the page. After each change of the input field, the get reverse text function will be triggered, which is fine. But what happens if we add another state to this component? Let's say we want to add counter state with default value of 0. And I will create a button where we are going to increase the value of the counter on each click. And on each click I will set counter to counter plus 1, which will update the counter state. So let's try clicking on this counter button. So you will see that with each click we will trigger get reverse text function. So in order to prevent this unnecessary triggering of the function, we can use use memo hook from React and it will return memoized value if dependencies are not changed. First property of the use memo hook will be a function that will return the value and the second one will be an array of dependencies. I will just move this part into use memo and dependency for this function will be input text. So this means that reverse text is going to be triggered only if the input text is changed. We can also test that by adding console count. Now let's switch back to the browser and when we press counter button, the reverse text is not triggered. It will be triggered only when the input value is changed. And I realize this part is a little bit confusing, so I will add labels for both texts and also a line break between them. And it is much better now. Thank you for watching this video. If you find it useful, please like it and subscribe to my channel.